Hey, thanks for joining. Today, we're talking about how to get the most out of your health savings account. Health insurance in the US is a necessity, and whether you get insurance through your employer or a spouse's employer, or get it through the healthcare marketplace at healthcare.gov, there are so many options ranging from public to private, PPO to HMO, to HDHP, to Medicare, Medicaid, CHIP, VHA, etc. Too many acronyms there and a lot of different options. Today, I wanna to focus on high deductible health plans or HDHPs and the corresponding health savings accounts or HSAs that are available to utilize with the high deductible health plans. Joining me today as pet guest is Ray from New Hampshire. Thanks for joining me, Ray. <laughs> Literally joining me, jumping into the camera. High deductible health plans provide you with lower monthly premiums at the expense of higher deductibles. These plans seem to work best for those that have low health care plan usage, young and healthy, or lots of health care usage, where you tend to hit the individual and family deductibles and out-of-pocket limits quickly, and then insurance pays the balance of your costs for that year. These high deductible health plans do require some planning and putting money aside for your health care costs. This is where the health savings account comes into play. You can set aside pre-tax money from your paycheck for a health savings account and this lowers your taxable income. Many employers will also contribute funds into your HSA as an incentive for you to utilize a high deductible health plan. For 2022, the annual limit for HSA contributions for an individual is $3,650 or $304 a month, and for a family is $7,300 or $608 per month. High deductible health plans have an annual family out-of-pocket cost limit of $14,100. Check your specific plan options for details of what your plan out-of-pocket limit is. So the worst case you'd be setting aside half of your maximum possible out-of-pocket costs for the year in the HSA if you maxed out your contribution. The vast majority, 96%, of people who have HSAs utilize these funds to pay for their healthcare costs for the year. You get a debit card that holds the contribution funds and you use this for medical transactions. But in order to get the true advantages of your HSA, you need to be part of the 4% of people with HSAs and utilize the investment portion of your HSA plan. As always, talk to a CFP or financial advisor if you are considering investing. There are tax benefits at every step of the process with HSA plans. Talk to your tax advisor about how this affects your specific situation. In an HSA, the money is contributed pre-tax so you don't pay income tax on these earnings. And if you are having your HSA contributions deducted from your paycheck, you don't have to pay FICA taxes like Social Security and Medicare on those earnings either. Then the growth of the funds in your investment account grow tax-free. And when you take money out of your investment account, a distribution, you don't pay any taxes on this as long as it is used to pay for medical expenses. So, you can imagine a scenario with your HSA strategy where you contribute to your HSA year after year and it benefits from that compounding growth that's typical of investments and you end up essentially with a retirement account specifically for your future medical expenses in retirement that never gets taxed. Amazing opportunity. That's right, Ray. Now, this strategy is certainly not for everyone, so let's go over a few disclaimers. You need to have a high deductible health plan. These plans have lower premiums, but higher out-of-pocket costs. Many people underestimate the out-of-pocket costs that can be incurred from a plan like this. In order to set aside all your contributions into the HSA investment account and let it grow, 
you need other funds outside of your HSA set aside in a savings account, for example, to cover these possible out-of-pocket costs. So if you don't have the ability to both save towards the HSA and cover your out-of-pocket expenses, then this strategy is not for you. That's not to say high deductible health plans and HSAs are not for you. This is still a good approach for setting aside money pre-tax into an HSA cash account to cover your medical expenses. Just skip the investment aspect of this. Another disclaimer with HDHPs is that some people tend to not seek medical attention or avoid addressing medical issues since they know the out-of-pocket costs for the care might be higher. With these high deductible health plans, you're trading your lower premium for the higher deductible, and this doesn't make sense for everyone. <laughs> no, considering you're a cat, maybe pet insurance. That's another topic entirely, maybe for another day. So, assuming you plan to contribute to your HSA and invest these funds, and cover medical costs outside of your HSA, in other words, you're not using the HSA debit card, then you need to keep track of these medical expenses paid for since you'll need proof for the IRS that you can reimburse yourself for these expenses sometime later down the road. Some HSA plans provide means of tracking receipts and will keep track of your reserve or the money that you can pay yourself later. But if you change jobs or your employer changes HSA providers, then you lose all this important history. So I recommend keeping track of all of these costs and receipts on your own. In my Etsy shop, I have an HSA tracker for this purpose. See the link in the description. I utilize this tracker in Google Sheets and then save my receipts to Google Drive. So let's give an example of just how powerful this HSA investment is. Let's say you are a 40-year-old with family and start contributing the full $7,300 per year or $608 per month to your HSA and investing it in a broad-based index fund. Let's assume you continue these contributions for 25 years until retirement age of 65. Assuming 8% growth on your investments, your $182,500 of contributions will have grown to $578,000 $541. During these 25 years, you are paying for medical expenses out of pocket, keeping track of these expenses and receipts for possible future tax audit, and let's say your out-of-pocket cost was an average of $8,000 per year over that time, or a total of $200,000. That $200,000 can be reimbursed to you at any time, and then you have $378,541 remaining in your HSA investment account that can be used to pay for future medical expenses or left con to continue to grow or a little bit of both. All tax free. Pretty powerful. Thank you, Ray, for joining me again and to you for watching. I hope you learned something that you can take action on today. See if a health savings account makes sense for you. If you can be part of the 4% that takes advantage of the investment option and the tax advantages that this offers, your future self will thank you very much, I'm sure. If you like the content, please hit the red subscribe button and the thumbs up or like button. If you know someone who could benefit from the content, please share. Take care and be safe.